Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mike Schaffer with Ask Men, and welcome to day three of our ultimate Mother's Day Toolkit Hangout. Because today, we are going to learn a little bit more in detail than just the average gift. Today, we're going to teach you a little bit about cooking, because Mother's Day, nothing else is about making a mother feel special, and cooking is a great way of doing that. But before we get there, let's start by seeing who I'm joined with today. Elisa, why don't you say hello? Hi, guys. I'm Elisa Benson. I'm the social media editor at Cosmopolitan Magazine, and I'm not a good cook, but I love to eat. Okay, well, that's good. We need good eaters here as well, and you're going to yes. learn as much as I am from this. Thankfully, we've got a great chef here, a very important food guy around the office here at Ask Man, Pete Schwartz, self-pronounced, quote-unquote, gourmet chef. Pete, why don't you say hello? Hey guys, Pete Schwartz here with Ask Men. I'm a little bummed that Lisa kind of stole my line. I'm not a good cook, but I love to eat. But I mean, I guess we'll, we'll certainly give it a shot and see if I can leave some uh, parting advice here. I think a good cook starts with having good passion for eating because you're just sitting at home going, you can't, your, your standard comes higher and higher. Isn't that kind of how you got into cooking, Pete? Absolutely. Um, I, you know, my mother was, was a fantastic chef and a very committed chef. So every day was dinner around the table. And after a little while, I kind of asked some questions about why does this, why does the, the steak t taste one way today, you know, different than it tasted last week? And so she started introducing the idea of spices, and then we started having sort of a food dialogue. I said, well, can I come a little before we eat and kind of learn how to cook a little bit? And then that sort of blossomed, and, and I've, I've really enjoyed spending some time in the kitchen over the years. So you didn't have a lot of friends growing up, really, is what we're, what we're well, saying. Well, none, actually. <laughs> okay, no, okay, good. Guys. <laughs> no, but what I like about what you said is a good segue for Mother's Day because I, I mean I, I know your family and it's a true story. You you do pick up some of these traits from your mom, which is kind of perhaps I think why cooking for your mom on Mother's Day has become a thing. Elisa, do you think there's a connection between moms cooking for their kids growing up and then kind of returning the favor? Oh, absolutely. I think we all have that memory of like mom. You know, in my family, it was always pancakes. That was like the Sunday tradition. Um, so I definitely think that. You know, once you get old enough, you kind of return the favor. Well, that's good. I think uh, Peter has decided to really show us today how to return that favor. And so, Pete, why don't you start by telling us exactly what we're going to be making today? If imagining a world where we're serving breakfast in bed to our to our mom, to our wife, to to whoever just is deserving on Mother's Day of this treat. What are we going to be making for them? Well, I'll, before I tell you what we're going to be making, I just want to tell you a little bit about why we're making what we're making because. The way I see it, you know, I think the best meal most guys probably ever made their mother for Mother's Day was when they were four years old, and it's that scene in the movie where there's flour all over the kitchen and batter everywhere and some burnt pancakes come out, but at least you put the effort in. And see, so she loved that. And everywhere, for the next 20 years, all you make on Mother's Day are really good reservations. And then it's nice to kind of switch it a little bit and get back to cooking. So I think the important thing is to cook. To whatever it is, just to put a little bit of effort in. So what we're going to be doing today is something that has a lot of impact. It looks really nice. It tastes really nice. It's sugary, which is always a good, a good cheat. But it's really, really simple to do. So we're going to be making French toast with just a few little tricks to kind of punch it up, the flavor and look and so forth. But at the end of the day, it's just really luxurious, delicious French toast. Who doesn't love that? Okay, good. I like the I like the history behind it. I agree. I did I did mess up the kitchen more than I did clean up the kitchen when I well, went through that I've operation. I've been to your apartment. Don't forget. I I've seen your kitchen today. That's true. That <laughs> it's like mildly there's, improved. There's it's still mildly improved. flour all over your kitchen. There's way too much of that information getting out into the Google universe right now. We'll just we'll just back away from that. We'll back away from that. Okay, so why don't you uh, take us through um, the first step, and Elisa and I will just kind of try and follow along with everyone else and and scribble down some notes. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. So take us through it, Pete. Okay. So at the end of the day, we've got French toast. Toast, the bread, is kind of the star of the show, or at least it's the foundation. Um, so that being the case, you don't want to phone in the main ingredient. So, you know, forget about the, the uh, jar of mustard you know you have in your fridge and that's that white bread that who knows where it came from in the plastic bag. Forget that. Today we're going to be something a little bit special for mom. So get a, you know, get go to the bakery. Get a nice piece of bread that's been handmade, that has been love put into it. So you know, that being said, you can really use any bread you like. I recommend kind of an egg buttery, a, a brioche bread. So that could be an egg bread. It could be matzah. I've used here uh, a croissant. 
very easy to find. I'm and sorry, just did you say? Down. Did you? I'm sorry, Pete. Did you say matzah? <laughs> you could use. You could use. Uh, sorry, I'm not halal, but you could use. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think matzah would make the most moist and delicious French toast, but in fact, <laughs> may not. Maybe you have a trick up your sleeve we haven't haven't learned. So halal, I think, egg bread basically. In my, in my Bobby's kitchen. <laughs> Okay. But today we're doing we're doing a, a croissant or a crescent roll. You can get the uh, you know, if you get a Pillsbury one, bake it yourself if you like. But just something light and fluffy and really really buttery is kind of a good way. I, I have to put this on pause to say you are already blowing my mind. I didn't know that was a thing to make French toast with a croissant. Well, wow, you, you did. We're actually done, done here. We, yeah, done. There we go. Thank you for joining up. us. We've blown Elisa's <laughs> mind, and we're all done. <laughs> There's more anyway, to come. Anyway, keep just going. I can't wait. We're just getting started. There's more to come. So uh, okay, so we have we have the croissant, and then obviously to you know turn it into the French toast, we're going to make the the batter, which you really don't have to get too extravagant here. I just you could crack some homemade eggs. Uh, free range if you buy eggs, remember, very important. But this is just some free range egg, pre made egg mix, keeps in the fridge, very, very simple. In fact, you can even put this into ice cube trays if you want to keep it even longer. But it's uh, really, really easy to use. I have a little bit of cream, so you want that luxury, that extra fattiness, brings a little bit of sugar as well and lightens up the batter. Is that, Pete, just on the cream? Is that whipping cream? Is that table cream? What type of cream are you recommending? I'm using whipping cream because I've been spending the last few weeks training really hard at the gym, so I'm going to let this pay off a little bit, and I'm sure my mom will appreciate it as well. Um, but you can just as easily use uh, skim milk or, you know, or any, you know, any kind of milk. But again, we're, we're kind of going to pull out all the stops today and go as luxurious as possible. So get the fat content out. Whipping cream is fine. And now we start going into flavor. So we're going to add a little bit of vanilla. Now, just a, a little caution about buying vanilla. You often see this sort of fake, uh, it's a, a fake vanilla product, which you should really never, ever get. You should get the pure uh, vanilla. Pure vanilla is what it's called. It's, it's a little bit more potent, but the flavor um, is a lot more intense and, and, and really is vanilla, so it's a lot more luxurious. So we're going to put a little vanilla in, and then just a little pinch of, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I have some, some sugar. I have confectionery sugar, which is very really light, and dissolves easily in batter, but you can use any sugar you like. And I think between the milk, the vanilla, and the sugar, you're starting to get the picture here. This is going to be a pretty sweet meal. I'm starting. I'm starting to get hungry. Is what I'm starting to get. I think well, it's going to be I'm at least in a position where I can pop by for a little taste afterwards. At least you might be in a little bit of trouble on that one. So I want you guys to send an intern. Okay. With that. <laughs> well, we have some interns that don't look busy enough today, so we'll we'll Perfect. get on that. <laughs> All right, intern sent. Okay, so let's get to it. Now, in terms of specifics, I have to confess that I more often than not kind of eyeball the amounts. So I think if you if you want to be precise, two eggs would be more than enough uh, to put in. But just eyeball it. Basically, if you're cooking for mom, you're making you know one one crescent roll. If you want to cook for mom and maybe friend or maybe sister, maybe mom and dad bring everyone in the party, two rolls. So two eggs is more than enough. Wait, but Peter, can I just say that's my pet peeve because as someone that doesn't know how to cook, I need an exact amount. Like, don't uh, tell a girl who doesn't know how to cook. To I was going to say, the same, I mean, a lot of chefs, like I've seen the way Jamie Oliver does this thing, they love to just say, grab a whole bunch just of this and throw it in. You know, but we will post the actual recipe with well, details. Okay. So what I'm going to say, just to be clear, is two eggs. Two and eggs. I'll Thank some you. Leftover, but that will be more than enough. I remember I once had the good fortune to... Uh, uh, to have a chat with, with Bobby Flay. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a, an iron chef and sort of a big celebrity chef and so forth. And uh, we got to talking, and I was asking him just about the history of his, of his career and what he loves about the kitchen and so forth. And he gave me the whole story, and he said, basically, it nets down to, I love to cook. I love to cook anything. Southwestern is my favorite, but I cook anything. What I hate is to bake. Hmm. And I hate to bake because when I cook, I can just throw stuff together and you know, so far it's worked out pretty well. Baking is precise, and I think a lot of guys kind of feel that way as well. There's a lot of precision. So I respect, I respect the sort of attention to detail, and I'll, I'll make great effort to, to really portion out everything exactly. Thank you. More, yeah, more specifics, or Lisa's just going to leave. That's it. She's done. Unfortunately, probably <laughs> just tuned out of the broadcast, but forever. <laughs> okay, 
So vanilla extract, you definitely want to be very sort of conservative with this. Just a little, little bit goes a long, long way. So I'll say half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Not very much at all. That's Tell half a, a teaspoon, Elisa. I don't see you writing that down somewhere. You need to really, you're going to take this seriously now. Get it jotted. Thank you. The other little thing about um, the vanilla extract that you kind of just want to have in the back of your head, and, and you certainly want this in the back of your head while you're cooking everything, is the coloration. This vanilla extract is dark, so it's going to color the batter and make it darker. But you kind of want your French toast to look as light as possible. The only thing golden is the crisp you want on. So let's try to keep everything light. So really watch that vanilla extract. And now, uh, like I said, just a little bit of sugar, not too much. Elisa, will you forgive me if I say a two pinches of sugar? I that means nothing to me. <laughs> oh my god, she's driving a hard bargain here, Pete. You better get even more specific. Yeah. You know, I forget what it is, but Pete just for your own sort of research afterwards, a pinch actually has a precise measurement in cooking. Okay. It, there is an amount if you if you look it up. Um, if you say so, Peter. What's that? I said if you say so. He's the expert here, at least, so we have to trust in him. Okay. If, we, if we abandon faith in Peter, then we've just abandoned faith in this whole process. So I, I'm going to go with a pinch, a couple of pinches. It's probably safe to say just about a half a teaspoon again, Pete. is not crazy. Yeah, that sounds exactly right. And so I also put in one tablespoon of cream. You don't want too, too much. And if the lower the fat content, you can go a little bit more. So you, you want to keep it light. So if you're using skim milk, you could go a tablespoon and a half. I'm using whipping cream, so one tablespoon. Okay, so we whip it up, and you don't have to, you know, put a lot of elbow grease into this one. We're not thickening, we're not, you know, trying to uh, emulsify it or anything like that. We're just really trying to mix the ingredients together. So that's all we do. Um, and then into the pool with our French toast. Now, I know the success that I've had in the kitchen, which is why I know to make two, because usually the first one gets loused up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soak two just to err on the side of caution. That's probably a good piece of advice for most guys out there trying to cook, is the err on the side of caution is good advice. I mean, you... Yeah, definitely. Make, make more. Um, you know, no, you'll, you'll never be guilty of giving too much or giving the right one, but you definitely want to lose stuff. But so, I have to say, it looks pretty easy so far. I feel like yeah. even I could do this. And you know what? It's going to stay this easy. It really never gets complicated. So I'm actually going to leave it soaking here. We're Lisa, are, uh, sorry, Peter. Lisa, are you just bad in the kitchen? Is that kind of a confession that you don't really know your way around a kitchen? Or I, Yeah, it's that generic New Yorker stereotype about getting all your food like off the internet, never cooking. So if, your, on Mother's Day, if on Mother's Day someone was to cook you breakfast, this would be a, a terrific start to your... I would, I would die. Mind blown. <laughs> well, let's not... Again, I feel like there's a lot of pressure on that meal, but okay, Pete, so we're trying to save <laughs> Elise's life here. So. I don't mean to interrupt you guys, but just important sort of food safety little uh, announcement here. Always, 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 whenever dealing with raw eggs, you're going to be washing your hands. So always kind of do this. Anything that touches the eggs, any instruments that touch the eggs, you know, take it away. And in fact, if you're going to be doing any cutting for whatever reason, with items we're not going to be, but if you're doing any cutting on, uh, with something that's touched egg, it's useful to use two cutting boards. So egg or chicken, and you know, just take it right off afterwards, okay? okay. So, so thanks, Peter, that. for interrupting us with your boring safety information. I mean, geez. That was so boring. I mean, my okay. God. <laughs> so, back, uh, back to the so, Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the, the bread soaking in the batter, so it's really taking in the egg. I'm going to put that to the side. And what I'm going to do now is make the fruit compote. Okay, that's going to be something that we put on top, and that's really going to make it a fresh, vibrant, really special, you know, French toast. So it's not just the bread and the maple syrup. You've got a lot of flavors kind of going on at once. A little bit of citrus, a little bit of crunch. So I have very basic. I have just some blueberries, um, blackberries, raspberries, and peaches. Now again, we really want to make it as simple as possible. Lisa, do you have a question? Oh, I just said interesting. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. When it comes to fruit, you can just sort of throw it all in with the kitchen sink type thing. Just kind of keep going. Um, so I slice some peaches, but honestly, if your knife skills aren't the best, I mean, 
God kind of took care of the work on the on the berries because they're all very small. Peaches are a little cumbersome to get in the pan. Um, but if you if you want it, it's easier for you. You can just buy uh, some regular canned peaches right here and put that in. And so basically, when you're making a compote, it's just it's just cooking it a little little bit and fortifying it with some sugar. So one thing that's really nice about using these canned peaches is that the, the syrup that's already in the can is a fantastic. Uh, cooking lubricant and kind of fortifying it with, with the sugars, the syrup in the, in the can. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to put them here and give a little small chop. So you really need two pans going during this process, Pete, I imagine? You don't want to use two at all in the same guy? Pardon me? You need two pans going for this operation? Well, is this a know, two pan operation? Is this a two pan ordeal? Do I have to buy another pan in my life? I've got one pan that I get by on. Now you're. You talk to two pans. I just want to know your basic sort of kitchen setup that will get you through just about any dinner, lunch, or breakfast is two pans, one pot. That's that's kind of what you need. So we have the two pans here. We're not making a one pot meal for dinner, but maybe in a future episode we'll do that. Two pans is what you want, and one chef's knife. You'll get through most most prep. Okay. Good. So I guess at least I have some shopping to do. I know. I was like, that's more than I have in my kitchen. <laughs> just, the just, other day, the other day, I realized in my kitchen, this is tells you how much I order in that I didn't have pepper. You didn't have pepper. I didn't in, have pepper. Have you ever had pepper? Like, did you run out of pepper? I mean, I think when my old roommate moved out in September, she, she took, took the pepper, pepper and it took me this long to notice. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I know. Okay. That you I mean, definitely are, are. You're not spending too much time in in the kitchen. So, no. would you do it if you had more time? Is it something you enjoy doing? I I think that what I dislike about cooking is what everyone dislikes, which is the washing the dishes afterward aspect. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Peter, are you planning on cleaning up everything you're doing back there afterwards? That actually just occurred to me. Right. You know, usually the deal is, you know, the best couple is where one loves to cook and the other loves to eat, which is a euphemism for the other usually gets stuck with the dishes. <laughs> that's pretty fair. I um, think on Mother's Mother's Day, though, it's a one-way street, right? On Mother's Day, you're, you're doing all the happy You're doing dishes. it all. You're doing it all. You're doing the shopping, you're doing the cooking, and you're doing the cleaning. The only thing you're not doing is the eating, but that's only one day a year, so it's okay. Cool. Um, I'll show you just, just uh, one little trick. I didn't do very heavy chopping at all, but sometimes if you're chopping herbs or certainly if you're chopping up some meats, you really kind of have to put your shoulder into it, and your cutting board can slide around, and you definitely don't want that because obviously... Sliding cutting boards, you know, lead to accidents. So just one little trick I'll show you guys is if you uh, if you get like a a kitchen towel, this is just a regular little kitchen towel, and you put it in the water for just a second. You don't want it sort of where you can douse it up with tons of water, but just dampen it a little bit, and you put that on your uh, right on your cooking surface below your cut cutting board, and you put your cutting board. It's really really secure now, so you can cut, move. Shake the table, you know. It uh, it really keeps the cutting board really uh, sound and intact. So just I, I feel what's great about this cooking experience is that you're very concerned for everyone's safety, and I, I think that that is actually important information because a lot of guys are going to fire into the kitchen with no clue as to how to make sure, and they're going to come out with missing fingers and you know salmonella. So this is you know, good advice. It's funny because I think if it was like poker night and I was cooking for the guys, I'd be a lot more relaxed about everything. <laughs> Because I'm cooking for mom, in my head I'm going back to being five years old in the kitchen and all the instructions she gave me. I'm really sort of on my best behavior here. That's good. These are good messages to pass along, I think. It's very good. That's it. Okay, so we're going to go to a medium high heat, nothing too, too hot. Um, go in with a little bit of butter. Usually, you know, we try to cook with oil, but again, today is Mother's Day, so let's pull out all the sauce. So a little bit of butter goes in the pan. Is that maybe a tablespoon of butter? Oh, she's on you again, <laughs> Pete. I'm on you. Right. Yeah, let's say a tablespoon of butter, but the caveat to that is that while you're cooking, especially while you're cooking the French toast and so forth, if you see that the butter starts getting absorbed into the French toast, keep adding, keep adding butter. You always Endless want butter. a little bit of sizzle happening, because that's kind of the cooking process. Otherwise, if there's no sizzle, it's kind of dry, and that can pretty quickly lead being burnt a little bit. So you want to keep the pan over here. So butter's in. Going in with the peaches. Now in 
this instance, you asked before if, uh, if we need to have two pans to cook with. Because I'm making the fruit compote first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my spatula to kind of get the fruit compote out. But if a little piece of blueberry or raspberry or some butter gets left or some sugar gets left behind, that's only going to enhance the flavor of the French toast. So we can use the same pan for this. If we were going the other way around, we wouldn't want to get egg and so forth into the fruit combo. That's why we're starting with the topping first. Okay, so my one pan operation is still a go, Lisa. I still might be able to get by with one pan on this one, so. I like it. And unless he calls for pepper, you're in good shape as well. <laughs> right, it's looking good so far. <laughs> so peaches are in. Um, I've got maybe two tablespoons of blackberries and the same measurement, blueberries, raspberries. I actually ran my knife through the raspberries beforehand so they're not all intact and that's just going to let the raspberry juice kind of come out and really mix in with everything and enhance the flavor uh, and bring it all together. Sounds complicated. Put in a few whole fruit and oh. chop up a few of the fruit. Not a problem. Peter, uh, Lisa feels this sounds a little complicated. <laughs> you mentioned you put your knife through a raspberry and she felt that might be a little bit more Sorry, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing them in the pan. Just <laughs> the, them in the she's pan. not doing any of that. She's just grabbing a handful. Yeah. So if you're going in with uh, some of the peach syrup here, that's very sugary, and that's really going to bring this all together. Now here's a little gangster trick. One little pinch of salt into kind of a sweet environment Mm. Which you may say, like, why do we want to make the fruit salty? It's not going to make it salty. It's just going to punch up the flavor. So whenever you bake, toss a little pinch of salt in. Certainly when you make this compote, a little bit of salt. Brings the medley together and brings the flavor up a little bit. Alisa, like go ahead. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I like how fruit compote sounds really fancy, but turns out it's just hot. <laughs> yeah, they, they really try and make it look when they sell it in the gourmet places that it's a, a very elaborate process. But I think I could accidentally make fruit compote if I tried it. If I just left the fruit on my counter. Oh, yeah, I think you could. Would that count as compote, Pete, if I left all those fruits on my counter in the sun and I came home? Would that be compote uh, Well, I think that's what you'd regularly call some dessert or dinner, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Once again, my cooking habits are eating habits are not what's on trial here. Let's just let's leave that. <laughs> okay, so listen, I don't know if I don't know if you can see. Can you guys see that? Yeah, at all? not bad. A little bit closer would be great, but we can't see it. Okay, so hold on. So that you can see, it's kind of syrupy. The flavors have have uh, combined, but we don't want it to lose color. So cook it just a little bit and then stop. So if you can see, it still has its color, which is going to be great. And actually, at the end, you're going to throw back in some fresh fruit. So it's going to be warm and kind of jammy and sugary, but then at the end, we'll knock a few fresh fruit on top. So there'll be some cold, some hot, some saltiness. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So that's here. We're just going to put the compote off to the side there. Okay. Little, little side compote. Little side. <laughs> What's up with our bread? Is it still like soaking? Yeah, in the it, where, egg where is where is the bread, Peter? Is it soaking? Is it drowning? What's happening with it? At least it's very. <laughs> Should we be concerned? Exactly. Bread, where? Are, oh, it's right there. Good. Um, it's okay. Oh, right. Good one. Okay, we got it. So again, tablespoon of butter in. Get a nice little sizzle sound. The other thing you want to watch out for in terms of, uh, I, I mentioned medium high, or me, medium heat rather, butter will turn brown pretty quickly if you don't keep an eye on it. And we talked earlier about coloration, not wanting to put too much vanilla in the egg. Similarly, you don't want your butter to brown on you. So keep, definitely when cooking with butter, you're going to want to keep your heat a little bit on the lower side. So it stays a nice, okay. nice light color. That explains a lot. Let me just bring it by the camera again. If you look at it, if any of you can see it, it's really nice and clear. Can't see it. Well, Taking your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, if you can imagine what clear butter looks like, at least if that's what it looks like. I can, I can speak to it. I have seen it. <laughs> okay, so we're in. 
Now what I'm going to do is there's the slice side and the outside. I'm going to go outside, uh, sorry, I'm going to slice side the inside down first. And there's a reason for that. I don't know if you can hear the sound, but there's really some nice sizzle action. Happening. Well, hold on. Before you tell us the reason for that, Elisa, would you like to guess at what the reason is for that? I mean, I think the flat side is the side that you want to get all French toasty, if you will. Mm, French. We're getting technical terms now. Peter, <laughs> what do you think about I have my own theory, but... You definitely want to be French toasty. She's absolutely right. Um, <laughs> you really want to work out all the sides to be relatively French toasty. The reason why we're going flat side first is because you know when you have a good hamburger and you watch the guy behind the counter making it, he puts the patty down, and then he puts the cheese, the slice of cheese on top while it's still on the grill, and the cheese, by the proximate heat, starts melting onto the, onto the patty. We're going to do the same thing here. Uh, so when I flip it up and I'm cooking the other side, the inside will be face up. That's when I'm going to go on with the Nutella sort of chocolate sauce, which is a bit hard if it's just out of the fridge or the pantry, but it's going to soften and smooth out and get really gooey, which is what we want. Do you just go in the back of restaurants, Pete, and just watch them cook your food so you can kind of get that up close and personal with how it all happens? I lost okay. it. Just focus <laughs> Focusing. On the yes. side of things, Lisa. We don't want to distract you. This is crunch time. Yes. Let's get to the Nutella part. Yeah, that's the part that has both of us quite mouth-watering right now. So let's, right. Just, let's get to that already. Fruit is not as interesting as Nutella, fact. Yeah, I'm over the fruit. <laughs> I'm over a compote. It's done. <laughs> All right, I got to bring it over here just so you see the inside. Okay. That's a nice go. golden crisp on the inside. Mm. Going good. The mm. miracle of cooking. So I'm going to put just a little bit more butter in. <laughs> I think between every step there's been a, so just a little more butter. I mean, this is, this is definitely an intense one. This is butter-tastic, if you will. How's okay. that? You kind of have to go <laughs> You definitely don't want to over the corner. That. that is what faces me. So here's the Nutella. Yes. Bravo. Nutella. Yay, Nutella. But honestly, at this point, feel free to use anything. You can use caramel sauce, mushroom sauce. If you wanted to take it in a more savory direction, which would also be beautiful, you could put cream cheese. You could put cream cheese with locks and make that into the French toast. So really, cutting some herbs. Go any direction you like. Yeah, that's all great. Let's focus on the Nutella. Thanks. Uh, I think we, uh, well, Elisa and I have decided we're happy with the Nutella operation. Yeah, one step at a time. We're still on French Toast 1.0. And what I'm also doing, very simple, is I have some crushed pecan nuts. Very sweet. The Nutella has a lot of hazelnut in it. So I'm just going to add some pecan nuts. Uh, so quick question, Pete. Did you crush the pecans, or did they come crushed? Elisa would like to know if she has to crush them, or I would did like she buy to them already crushed? Yes. They came not crushed. What? Oh All right. This is well, so hard. She's out. Yeah. That's it. We lost her. A little bit of a crush. But you know what? Maybe that's a good opportunity to go ask Dad to come in the kitchen and get in on the action to offer a little help. Well, this is Ask Men. This is for guys to learn how to do a little something. If they can't crush a few nut, well, if they can't crush some pecans, crush a few, it's getting crush weird. a few pecans. <laughs> okay, so it's really, really looking nice. We're, we're there. The, the, the Nutella is starting to ooze out over the sides. If you can see it here, I'll bring it up afterwards. And the reason why I put the nuts in, obviously the flavor is great, but you don't really see them. So when mom cuts through the fruit, through the French toast, in the Nutella, and bites, it's going to be a crunch that kind of came out of nowhere. And having the contrasting textures is something that's very, very nice. Wow. So, there we go. We have our plate. Now, one thing I did at that time, you completely do not have to do this, but I took some more cream and cooked it in a pan with uh, some maple syrup ahead of time. And there's a lot of sugar in the cream. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to take the plate and just pour the cream right in the middle of the plate. Oh, this is getting serious. This is getting serious. Super fancy. I keep I don't like, know leaning if I'm closer fancy. to the camera to, to see it more. But. No. <laughs> to smell <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Google, work on that. Okay, so we're going to move here. We're going to try to go. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Lift up the camera. There's the someone there with you. Peter, run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're just going to sprinkle a few little pieces of fruit. Ooh. Pretty, pretty. This is like the Blair Witch of cooking shows. I like this. <laughs> 
and we will place that down. And I don't know if you can see it, but it really is. It's golden, it's brown, it's really, really nice. That looks great. And now, we take the fruit compote. Now, definitely do this <laughs> while mom's not looking, because you're going to be using your fingers a little bit, but that's OK. It's important to control, so we put the fruit compote right on top. Let it run off the sides a little bit into the cream. That's great. Then a few more pieces of fresh fruit. I feel like the fruit to Nutella ratio is a bit off, Elisa. What are you thinking? You know, I'm a big fan of fruit. I feel okay about it. I thought we were Nutella friends, and now you've just completely abandoned now, me in this now operation. Now I'm back on fruit. Man. I'm just hungry. Give okay, me a break. anything. It's fine. You just, you just want that plate. Well, I'm going to rethink this whole intern operation then. Please. Put a nice little piece of mint. Whoa. You just want to have your little green. And then for your maple syrup, you really don't want too, too much. Because <laughs> as you can tell, this is already pretty sweet as it is. So just a few little doses of maple syrup over the top. Feel free to hit the plate. I love how you've circled it 11 times, even though you started with saying just a little bit. But you're still <laughs> pouring it. And it's been Hold on, I'm take the bottle cap off and just pour the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's so beautiful. Yeah, you're gonna have to come around and uh, you're gonna have to bring that guy close to the camera, Pete. I'm gonna bring him close. close to the camera, but Elisa, all kidding aside, that's one of the most important things is you really do eat with your eyes first. And so for guys who, who cook at home, there's a tendency to just take raw things, apply heat, and put it, in, you know, shove it in your mouth. And if we can break that cycle a little bit, especially for mom on Valentine's Day, Mike, I see you making a face. It's just, I don't know, I didn't know anyone was paying attention. Don't mind me. <laughs> um, if you can just pay a little extra effort to making things look nice, you've kind of done half your job. You've already sold it before mom even takes the first bite. I think the fruit is kind of a good cheat with that, too, because it's so bright and colorful. Like, you, you dump some fruit on anything and it looks good. Absolutely. And just to that note, you sort of want the contrast in color. So you get the green mint, you get blackberries, you get some raspberry strawberries. Try to get different colors going on and really mix it up and make it as visually beautiful as possible. Now again, last little piece de resistance. Now we've got to get that beautiful plate. We've got to get it up to, to, to the wife in bed, piece. So, presentation. If we can bring, bring the camera up again. So really bring it over there. Try to get it on. Okay. So we have our little Mother's Day Breakfast in bed pan. Flour for mom. Aww. Oh, that was it. That's all it took, and you won Elisa over with the flour. It didn't matter anything that happened prior, the flour was scattered. <laughs> it's so easy. But um, there better be a mimosa going in that empty glass. All right, are we ready to, uh, to laugh at Peter? Uh -huh. Oh, boy. I'm scared. Pop Don't take models. the camera out. It's coming. There Yay! Yay! How festive. A little champagne. And now, do we put some butter or maple syrup in the champagne, Pete, or are we done with that? Hold on, did you want to put the Nutella in the champagne? <laughs> <laughs> the champagne. And it becomes an oven at meal time. So there it is. Nice Nutella French toast, compote on top, fresh fruit, some sweet cream on the bottom, glass of champagne, and a rose of a flower from mom. I love it. I think it's. Uh, it's. I think we got into some details there, but I think it, it is not a very complicated thing. Alisa, given what seems to be not a great amount of experience, any time in the kitchen, how do you feel about your level of competence to do this, or for the man in your life to do this? It looks easy. It looks delicious. I can't wait to do it. But more importantly, hopefully have Pete come over to my apartment on Sunday and do this for me. Well, look at that, Pete. You've got your first official catering gig has just yes. actually happened here. Yes. Fantastic. Invited over to Lisa. Yeah. Not sure which oh, one it is, but it works out great. I think it looks delicious. I'm going to definitely uh, consider doing that just for myself on Mother's Day. Really, not for anyone else. Um, I look forward to trying it. Uh, but let's uh, thank Elisa. Thanks so much for being here to watch uh, Peter uh, work his magic. And uh, Pete, well, I can't thank you it enough. It was for delicious. Doing such a great job. So we'll uh, we'll take some nice pictures for you, Elisa. Pete, any parting words, or we're just going to say, and that's it. Um, 
Mom's really going to appreciate it, but I think the most important thing, even if it's not this recipe, just any effort, even you know, scramble some eggs, uh, put some salt and pepper on top, chop up some chives, put that on top, and she'll be, she'll be, it's, it's the thought that counts. Um, so anything you can do, any gesture, I think, will be really appreciated. Do something, make an effort, if that's all that counts. I agree. So thanks, guys. Hope that's been helpful. If the full recipe Peter will put together, we'll have it up on our uh, YouTube channel on an Ask Ben very soon with all the details so you can walk yourself through it again and watch this video with Peter taking you through the steps. And we'll see you on our uh, next Mother's Day Hangout tomorrow. And look forward to talking a little bit more Mother's Day as the day approaches. And we'll see you guys all next time. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Ciao.